I am on my way to meet Pip Jameson, female tech entrepreneur and CEO of The Dots. She's really busy, but we've got an hour, so we're going to have lunch, and I'm going to ask her about starting a business, women in tech, and how to have a work-life balance. Can you describe your lunchtime routine? I'm really, I'm really boring. I eat exactly the same thing every day. Um, I kind of, I make so many decisions every day. I don't want to make another decision at lunch. <laughs> um, so yeah, I have kale eggs from the coffee shop downstairs. So Pip, can you just tell me, what is the dots? To explain it to me. Yeah, so, um, ugh, Forbes very kindly asked if we were the next LinkedIn, and I'm so going to own that. <laughs> I read it was the LinkedIn for not white collar workers. Yeah, is that no, right? no collar workers. No which collar workers. Which is the weirdest term ever, but we've kind of invented it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, amazing. yeah, we call it no collar workers because, you know, LinkedIn has been great for that kind of traditional white collar suited workforce, but actually the workforce is changing massively now. You know, people are making much more fluid career choices. People are freelancing, adopting portfolio careers. Everyone has side hustles, especially if you're mm. under 35. And so that kind of linear CV based way of promoting yourself is actually really tricky on LinkedIn. Mm. So yeah, I'm a non-tech tech founder who decided to uh, go after LinkedIn and become the next generation professional network. Is there any advice you would give to a woman starting a business or indeed wanting to grow their business? Yeah, oh gosh, it'd be hard to put one. I think, um, I think firstly, it's just do it. I mentor a lot of female founders and I think a lot of what holds them back is fear. And it's like, what if I start this and no one likes it and it doesn't get off the ground? And I think, you know, that fear of failure is so natural. We're all, you know, I'm terrified all the time, but I think, you know, in the end, think about who is who you love in this world. And if you fail, you know, they're going to be proud of you no matter what. So I think the most important thing is just do it. I think a lot of people just don't do it. What is the most stressful part? The thing about scaling businesses is it is like a constant stream of highs and lows and you know you're failing a lot of the time. I, I mean that's the nature of innovation. You're trying things, you're learning from the things that you're trying and I think when things are going wrong and I'm most stressed I actually find that's when I learn the most. So weirdly I've kind of psychologically gone, okay you're stressed but this is because this is happening and you're learning from this experience and it kind of shoots me out of it, I guess. Mm. I mean, if I've had a big day, I'll try and get to bed at nine, actually. There's an app called Calm, mm. um, which that. I love. Um, and I listen to the bedtime stories. And Matthew McConaughey. Yeah, oh my God. Oh my God, it's amazing. <laughs> but like, it's just Genius. so Genius. magical. Like, you yeah. know, one night I'll <laughs> listen to, you know, Alice in Wonderland and the next night I'll be going through like fields of lavender and um, it just really helps calm my brain. Or I listen to Harry Potter. Amazing. It's one of the two. Amazing. But it's the only thing that calms my brain, and then I'll go to sleep. So. Also, this app is the most millennial app because you can get the you know you get the sounds like cat purring or it has three different kinds of rain, it's light rain, heavy rain, <laughs> city rain. It's like it's so genius. I love it. Is landscape changing for women in tech? Yeah. Can more be done? Yeah. I mean, it's it's an unbelievably complex challenge. So there is a huge diversity problem. If you look at the tech industry as a whole, only about 30% of the workforce is female. And like every complex problem, there's no silver bullets. It's a very male industry and investors are primarily male, so they tend to invest in things that they understand. So, you know, um, Natalie, the founder of Net-A-Porter, for example, famously found it really hard to raise investment because male investors didn't get buying fashion online and the rest, as they say, is history. So, you know, there's so many different layers. And I guess when I first started the business, I'd go to tech events and it was 90% male. Like, terrible right and I am noticing now when I speak at a tech conference you're looking at about 40% female so there is a sea change starting to come how would you ask for help and this is not just you yeah. how does anyone ask for help without looking like you can't manage your workload yeah it's it's such an interesting one because I'm mentored by a couple of VCs actually venture capitalist and they said the reason they love working with me is because I ask for help and um, they said actually it's a very big difference they see in female founders to male founders where male founders don't tend to ask for help because they don't want to emit weakness well female founders when they have challenges would rather have help and get their to the solution quicker and obviously there's averages on each side not every man and woman is the same mm. but um but i guess i think the key to it is it one it's just knowing that when you're asking for your help that's not a mission of failure or that you can't do something actually it's just super professional and exactly what you should do if you need help no one knows everything what was the best advice you've ever been given 
Uh, there's a saying I love, um, and I, it was brought to my attention by an amazing woman called Holly Tucker, and Holly Tucker founded Not On The High Street, mm -hmm. and um, she said, be a cheerleader, the world has enough critics. And I think that's, that's something great. that always kind of resonated with me. I think as women trying to grip, break through the glass ceiling, as women in tech, you know, we've got to support each other through this journey and be each other's cheerleaders. And this, I have so many amazing cheerleaders in my life, both you know, friends, but also kind of a, people that have met along this journey. And I don't know if I'd be still in business if it wasn't for them sometimes, like pulling me up when I needed the help. And so I think it's, it's all of our responsibility to be the cheerleaders for the next generation coming through. Do you think a boss can ever overshare? <laughs> um, <laughs> you probably have to ask my team. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, um, can you? I don't know. I mean, I, I'm very open with my team. You know, I'm very open, very transparent about the business, about where we are. Um, I'm very transparent about some things in my personal life. I have a really family friendly, business um, so we've got like five baby dots as I like to call them um, dads and mums get flexible working in the office so that's been great for the rest of my team but the reality is I'm a I'm a female CEO I'm a sole founder I don't have a co-founder so it's a bit more challenging me going off and having children so me and my husband have decided to freeze embryos just so we've kind of frozen them for a while wow. but the reality of that is means I'm taking hormones at the moment and so I've had to be really honest with my team mm. because I don't know if I'm gonna like but I start crying in a meeting. So far, so good. <laughs> um, but, uh, but, you know, things like that. So, I mean, is that oversharing? I don't know, but I think it's, I need to tell them stuff like that because if I stop, I don't want to be irrational in a meeting. And if I start, I want them to understand why I'm maybe being irrational or also give them the opportunity to bring me up on it because they know why as well. So what is coming up this year for the dots? Oh, it's kind of a mental year. So um, we're just in the process of developing our international roadmap. So where we go to next, and we're primarily UK based in terms of our client base. So it's yeah, it's exploring. Do we launch across Europe, US, both? And then at the end of the year, I'll be raising more money to build that business internationally. So it's yeah, it's kind of a really exciting time. <laughs> Pip, I have taken up so much of your time. I know you're busy. You've got a full day ahead. We didn't even have time to finish oh, lunch. No, terrible. <laughs> but thank you so much for talking yeah, to us. Thank style. you so much for coming. I'll show you.